Oh, man, so the Terra Luna saga has all but been played out. The UST has lost its peg. Luna, to all intents and purposes, has been turned into a multi-billion circulating supply meme coin. But one mystery still remains, which we have to get to the bottom of. Because if we cannot figure out where the LFG, that's the Lunar Foundation Guard's Bitcoin reserves have gone, we could be looking at something more nefarious going on. So this is something we need to get into the bottom of. We're going to take a look and track where these Bitcoins have been moved to as far as we can and try to determine what is going on. Make sure you hit up the like button and subscribe. Don't forget, if you like my perspective, check out the course member live streams, ejars.uk forward slash member. At the end of the video, we're also going to look at some technical analysis because we're literally hours away from a critical weekly close on the Bitcoin chart, which we're going to take a look at too as well. Now, first things first, let's take a quick look at this this graphic is really interesting because this is the this is the lunar foundation guards reserves right and you could always monitor this as they were buying bitcoin remember going back into january to march do Kwon and the team figured that if the ust were to lose peg we need a reserve we need a reserve which will back this hugely fastly growing system with more and more UST being minted every single day, right? The popularity of the 20% yields on Anchor was attracting a lot of interest and loads of UST was being minted and staked on Anchor Protocol. And Do Kwon and the team, right, rightly so to a certain extent, said we need to go and build these reserves and he decided to build them in bitcoin so if those of you who remember through january to march um do Kwon and the team decided to buy up to 10 billion and from january to march they actually accumulated a total high of 3.5 billion btc you can see the high point here with other assets included but the bitcoin high was 3.5 billion dollars worth of bitcoin between january and march now some argue that this came a bit late he should have been building this reserve a lot sooner but as far as we're concerned we the, the system was built up to 3.5 billion but it was still a manual system the way this should have been was an automated system which allows the reserves to come into play as and when any depegging started to occur. Now, that didn't happen. Obviously, Dokon was at least a couple of months away from having that set up. And whoever this coordinated attackers were, which we've discussed in numerous videos, they picked the opportune time to attack on a low market period of time, right? The stock market's been down for four months. The crypto markets have been down for many months. It was a low liquidity weekend. And the attack happened at the exact right time. Now, Interestingly, when this was all unfolding, right, on May the 9th, Do Kwon came out and said that he was going to defend the peg. So if we head on over to the tweets, let's take a look at this tweet first. You had LFG who came out at the time on May on the 9th and said, as a result, the LFG council has voted to execute the following. They loaned 750 million worth of BTC to OTC trading firms, okay, to, to market makers, and then loaned 750 UST to accumulate BTC as market conditions normalize. Okay, that's what their plan was. And then Dokon came out and said, to clarify, the Bitcoin will be used to trade but the stronger intent is to, to signal peg strength to the market as capitulation sentiment has set in. Now, we can argue this you know, had a bit of a, the opposite effect, right? Because when you announce that you're going to defend the peg at a certain price point, not only are you signaling to the attacker that you've got 3.5 billion to back the peg and any attacker with more than that could therefore destroy you, but also you came in too early. And when you come in too early into a capitulating arena with people who want to sell their UST because they're panicking, they don't understand the technicalities of what's going on, they just want to get out, they start thinking, hang on a second, if there's 17 billion UST minted out there and Do Kwon's only got three 3.5 billion of BTC reserves. I'm going to get out now. I'm going to take my UST out now because I want to be one of the first 3.5 billion. I don't want to be coming out later on, right? People didn't have faith that it was going to repeg. They didn't understand. They just thought, oh, some, some bad news about Luna. Let me jump onto Anchor. Let me get my, let's get everything out and um, let's move it across before this, you know, safety net of 3.5 billion finishes. But that was part of the issue. I think it became a self-fulfilling prophecy in that it may have caused more harm then good. But the reality is, even if it was, or we don't know, well, sorry, the reality is we don't know if all 3.5 billion of the reserves were actually used. And that's what we want to get to the bottom of today, was were they used? If not, where are they? Who could know where they are? And more importantly, shouldn't it be spent to buy back UST? If there is some remaining, if Do Kwon decided to say, hang on a second, after spending the first billion, it's not working, did he keep some and say, okay, we'll live to fight another day? We need to know where that's happened. Unfortunately, the team has been a little bit quiet, right? So we've had 
uh, terror come out and say a post-mortem on everything that has transpired the past week is in progress. It'll be published ASAP. Do Kwon tweeted similar that they're working on documenting every little bit. But we need to know now because you know what the community is like. And everybody, our minds is like a devil's playground, right? So if we don't find out soon what happened to this BTC, human mind will start to create more nefarious scenarios because we don't know, right? So if we want to eliminate and give Do Kwon the... the, the um, the benefit of the doubt say no there was nothing nefarious going on there was no rug pull or this wasn't a scam or a ponzi we just need to cl we need closure on that to know where is that remaining 3.5 and i think all luna and ust holders will want to know exactly what happened in full tra transparency so let's do this let's follow exactly what happened and shout out to uh, elliptic for this blog post as well made it easier to track kind of where the money went so let's start up at the top and the top is that they acquired 3.5 billion okay bitcoin now 3.5 billion bitcoin at the time uh, sorry 3.5 billion dollars they've got uh, exactly 80,394 bitcoins okay let's see if i can find that for you 80,000 there you go 80,394 bitcoin is what they started with in the reserve then on may the 9th lfg announced what we just showed you on twitter on the tweet okay and then what they did was to they started spent they started moving 1.7 billion worth of the 3.5 billion so first they moved this much so 22,000 bitcoin about 750 million was sent from an lfg address you can see that this that's this line here to an unknown account okay so an unknown new account later that same evening another 30 thousand bitcoin was sent from other lfg wallets known lfg wallets to the same new account so this account here had the fifty two thousand one hundred and eighty nine thousand bitcoin this was then moved from this account very important to gemini it was subsequently moved to a single account a single account at gemini we know gemini is a us-based crypto exchange full kyc full aml um, it's not decentralized at all okay so this was done across several bitcoin transactions so several transactions they moved the fifty-two thousand bitcoin into a gemini address so 1.7 billion dollars roughly is sitting there in this gemini address now after that this is this is where things get interesting after that it's not possible by by this software that elliptic use etc it is not possible to trace the assets further or identify whether they were sold to support the ust price so we do not know from the public data we have available if once that 1.7 billion got to gemini was it actually used to buy ust was it moved to other addresses is it still sitting there was it frozen by gemini we don't know okay so we're going to come on to that in a shortly now that left 28000 remember we started off with 80000 bitcoin 28,000 Bitcoin is still left in LFG's reserves. And at 1 a.m. on the 10th, the next day, this was moved, all of it, all of it was moved to Binance. Okay, very important. This is a big transaction, a single transaction to an account on Binance. Again, a full KYC, full AML, Binance is a centralized exchange. Again, not possible to identify whether these assets were sold or if they were moved to another wallet or if they were even used to buy UST. Now that's where we sit right now that is where we sit in terms of this that's all we know and we the reality is we need to know where did these where did these bitcoins end up for for a few different reasons right because the reality is if if they weren't used to fight the peg why and that's understandable it could have been that the team tried to use one billion of it and it didn't work fighting the peg so they thought okay we won't keep telling everybody that this is where we're defending the peg so they pull the plug on it to to maybe fight another day in which case, tell us, right? Document that, tell us, we want to hear that. Was it moved to other addresses? In which case, where? Can we have transparency of where exactly each of the 80,000 Bitcoin were? Shouldn't it all now be at least used to buy up the UST peg first and start in, instead of starting a new project? Should, don't you owe it to the existing project to make them true? If people are currently sitting at a penny on the dollar, shouldn't you at least dump the remaining 2 billion, 3 billion, whatever you got left, into UST to bring it up so people can at least get a few pence back on their dollar. Um, that's also another thing. And then the other thing we really need to pick up is could Binance or Gemini have seized the account? This is an interesting, um, the funds. This is another interesting aspect. If they have, it may be that they've seized it and we can't yet know about it because if there is a criminal investigation or something happening further down the line, Binance and Gemini won't want to put themselves into trouble. So that could be an option as well. But ultimately, both of them are KYC 
uh, KYC exchanges. So we should know exactly whose accounts they entered in Gemini and on Binance. And that data should be shared out now because this is the people's money on something so popular like this. This is the reason you have centralized exchanges. Isn't that why they exist anyway? And isn't that why they do KYC and AML? So when you have uh, particular situations like this with potential, we have to say a potential criminal activity, we need to know where it is, right? Because we can't have this, you know, Three, up to 3.5 billion of BTC somewhere where we don't know where it is, right? It needs to be accounted for. And if it was there, fault for the peg, fine. You've used it all up. You, you, you did fight the peg. Can we see the transactions on Binance and on Gemini showing you bought UST on May the 9th, May the 10th to defend the peg? We need to see that. We also want to see the timestamp. Did you buy it now? Were you spending all the Bitcoin now? Or were you spending it at the peak in the right times when the UST peg needed it? Okay, so that's pretty much where we stand, I think. And I think ultimately we need super quick closure on that. Like, it shouldn't take long. You should document this really quickly. If you're Terra, if you're Doquan, you should be getting this out there because you're just tarnishing your reputation further. It's one thing that you have a failed project, but you don't want to be classed as a criminal when you're not a criminal. So for his own sake, you know, we all give him the benefit of the doubt that perhaps that he's not this Ponzi schemer. It was just a failed project. He meant good by it. Loads of people who know him, I personally don't know him, said he was really good. He had a really noble mission in terms of setting up decentralized money. That's good. That's good. And sure, he can go on and create new projects. In, in, in No doubt he will. But clear your name. Get it out there in the clear open. Let people know this is where the Bitcoins are. If there are any left, make sure you tell them you're buying UST to make everybody buying UST to make those people uh, slightly better off now. As in, you're not just holding the BTC. If you're trying to hold it for your own projects in the future or a Terra 2.0, then you know again, come out with your plan because at the moment you've got a really weak plan which not many people are getting behind. Um, and that's that really. That I think this is that's the final straw. We just need to hear from them sooner rather than later. I mean, we're now sat here on a Sunday, 15th of May, a good couple of days after doing that. How long does it really take to document it? You should be able to get that out unless there's something going on, unless there are criminal investigations, unless there are people looking into this and whether Binance or Gemini have freeze the funds. We're going to find out over the next couple of days, no doubt. So there you have it, guys. That is where the Bitcoin ended up to as far as we know, but we just don't know where did it go after the next step. Did it get spent fighting UST? Did it go to new wallets and potentially is it still out there or is it all gone? The project is done. All of it was spent. It was just a failed project and we can move on. Hopefully we can get some more light on this further into the rest of the week. One last thing I did promise to show you is on the Bitcoin weekly chart. Weekly chart. Let's head on over. I did promise to share you. We were monitoring this and we're sitting at 30,300 and it's looking okay right now. I don't want to jinx it because it has been quite a volatile day. But remember, we want this close above the 29,000 mark. We wanted this weekly candle to close above 29,000 just to give us a little bit of hope that we can use this to bounce up to the upside. And we haven't broken this trend line to the downside on the weekly. So this is an okay sign for us now. Again, we've got another five hours left before this weekly candle closes. And that could signal us that we haven't lost the lower lows from here right we kept a similar low here on a weekly candle and we've managed to fight that intra week so we'll keep an eye on that over the next five hours and into tomorrow remember the markets will open up tomorrow and naturally they'll give us more direction on are we heading into a bear market in the equities market and therefore is that going to pull crypto down or can we start buying the dip and rallying to the upside as always guys smash up the likes don't forget to subscribe so you can join us on this journey to building sustainable wealth in crypto as always if you'd like my perspective check out the link to the course member live streams below we're going to jump on a course member live stream in the next couple of hours here on a sunday to make sure all our course members are ready for the week ahead know what they're doing know what's in their portfolio we're going to jump on that so jars the uk forward slash member we'd love to see you over there thanks for watching guys We'll see you in the next one.